one. I'm um I published um a video probably yesterday, if I'm uploading this at the time I want to upload it, where I did um some layered goldfish stamps on acetate and with embossing. And I thought what I would do for you is a <coughs> an exploration of a technique I suggested in that same video, which was inverted layering stamping. So I've got here a piece of um, heat resistant acetate, I think. Might be normal acetate. Actually, do you know what? I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna cut myself a new piece of heat resistant acetate because I'm gonna emboss it. So obviously, don't wanna bugger it up. Now this is from Personal Impressions. It's a 0.1 millimeter thick. You get five sheets of A4 for, I don't know, about a fiver. A bit less than that, maybe. And I have to say, I don't think Personal Impressions make very good products. Sorry, Personal Impressions, but that's how I feel. Um, I'm not overjoyed with their stuff. I don't think it's great. And what this is, and I recognise it because one of the corners is cut rounded, this is exactly the same stuff we used to buy as laser copier acetate because that was heat resistant, that, that was kind of the point. And the reason it like kind of looks a bit fuzzy is because it's got anti-static powder already on it because it was put on it by the manufacturers. So what I'm guessing personal impressions have done is they have bought up from, um, from those companies, they have just bought up all of the um, laser acetate that no longer sells because we used to buy it for um, doing presentations when we used to give a lecture or a talk, we used to print it on acetate and then we would use that. So I think they've started buying it up and that that's what they're using it for. So um, this stuff is a total rip off. And if you've got laser toner acetate, I suggest you use that. Now I could guillotine this down neatly, but you know, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm gonna cut a piece because I don't want a large amount. I'm only demonstrating a method here. I'm not actually gonna make anything. Sorry to say that, but I'm not. And um, I'm going to use my knockoff Misty. Well, it's not a knockoff Misty. The Misty is a knockoff of something else, actually. Um, probably didn't all know that, but it is. It's um, it's a rip off of something that's been around a long time, namely the um, letterpress system. Sorry, my tripod moved. I tidied my desk earlier on. Yes, Valerie. Um, I didn't do it because you whinging. I did it because I couldn't find something, which is always the best reason to tidy, let's face it. Um, I was looking for something and um, I thought, do you know what? Sod it, time to tidy. So I'm putting it into my um, knockoff of a knockoff, if you like. And I'm just going to tape it into position with some crap painter's tape just to hold it down. And I'm using the large layering orchid set from Hero Arts, which I've used before. And I'm gonna use the largest orchid from that set. Now, ordinarily when you stamp these things, you start with the big kind of open space and then you work your way towards the smaller one. Well, I'm gonna be working in reverse today because I'm heat embossing every layer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give each of the stamps a clean on both sides because I don't know if they're very tacky at the moment. I think they're a bit dirty. I'm not actually going to stamp all the layers because there is a fourth layer and the fourth layer is a little bit of detail that goes right in the middle. I'm not actually going to bother doing that because um, it seems a bit futile for this technique to bother with such a tiny detail that's probably not going to show. So normally you do this kind of large area, then you do kind of moderate detail and fine detail, but we're working in reverse, so fine detail comes first. Now, I'm going to put the fine detailed piece into position and close the lid of my stamping tool. And I'm going to have to get this piece of acetate back in exactly the same position when I um, put it back in to stamp the other layers. So I'm just going to mark the layer of fun foam underneath with just enough information oops and I'm just doing that with a Diane Reevely acrylic paint pen just because it was the thing most likely to write on fun foam 
that was nearest to hand, to be really frank. Now, because we're going to be heat embossing, I'm going to attack this with my, uh, I think it might be called an embossing buddy, a little bag of cornstarch that costs a fortune. Um, you can make your own, you really don't need to buy these. These are really important though that you do apply a layer of cornstarch whenever you heat emboss on acetate because acetate attracts fingerprints and they attract embossing powder. So we're going to need that many times over. I'm going to be stamping with Versamark ink. You can't use the coloured Versamark for this. You have to use original clear Versamark. And I want to get a pretty good layer. So I'm going to use quite a bit. I'll just check. Yeah, I think that's given a pretty good impression, actually. Yep, it has. This is actually the first time I've tried this, so it's kind of like a live on camera experience um, for all of us. And I'm going to be embossing it with red geranium embossing powder from Wendy Becky at Ranger. So let me just plug in my embossing heat gun. My comment about this looking like an early 2000 sex toy um, has clearly gone down well with my audience who thought that was very funny. Sorry, but that's just what it reminds me of. Um, I've got a sheet of um, ordinary acetate somewhere. Actually, I'll just use this piece of um, watercolour paper that's left over um, to, to be my um, tool for picking up the excess embossing powder. I'm going to leave that piece of tape on because that's going to help me with um, moving this around later. So I'm just going to sprinkle on just enough to cover the sticky area. It doesn't need to cover anything else and I can probably, probably, probably get rid of this tape. Yeah, there we go. I was given advice by Christina Werner that when you do this, you always just tap to make sure there's nothing still loose. And that was red geranium from Wendy Becky's range at Ranger, which if you've not used them are a fine embossing powder. They're ultra fine, really high quality. You heat your heat tool up in your hand, first of all, until it's too hot to handle, and then you move to using it. Now, I've got some stray embossing powder, so I'm gonna use a cut horsehair stencil brush to just make sure I haven't got any around it. So if you're doing this on a card front, you're going to want to tidy around it. And that includes the back because that might melt as well. Okay, it's pretty quick to melt on acetate. I think the conductivity of the heat is such that it melts pretty easily. You might need to just straighten it a little bit after you've done it and waft it until the plastic melts and sets. And once it has, it's time to reload it back into our tool. And I've left the other stamp, which I'd stained with archival ink, and you can watch my video on how to do that um, in my quick tips series, which if I remember, I will link to in the iCards. I've been really bad at linking iCards lately. I keep uploading videos and forgetting that I said anything about the iCards. That will just help me know that I've got it in the right place. So now I take my embossing buddy, or whatever it's called, and apply another layer, because that gets rid of fingerprints. And then I take the medium, or the middle of the stamps from the set, and I align that over the top as well as I can, not necessarily perfectly. And I'm going to cover that in Versamark. And this one's got big solid areas on it, so I'm going to stamp it two times. And you'll be thinking, why is he doing this backwards? This could never possibly work. But all will be revealed, dear audience. There we go. And once that's fully on there, and you could use glycerine if you don't have Versamark, I'm going to go over this with um, Pink Peony from Wendy Vecchi again at Ranger. I just love her series of embossing powders because they're opaque. They've got one of the best ranges of colours. 
of the opaque powders and I don't think they're unreasonably priced. So over the top of that I'm going to throw on this pink and that will completely or should completely cover up the red, more or less, it won't be perfect. But it doesn't matter so much what it looks like from this side because we're actually going to use this in reverse. So and that looks like it's worked. You really need to use the colours sensibly here. So I started with red because that was the darkest colour. You really do need to do that darkest colour first and work to lightest if you're going to use this technique. So that's why I did it that way. Red first, then pink, and then we'll be going even lighter next. So again, heating on my hand first. And I would brush round this if I was going for an ultra clean look. But this is just a test piece, so I'm not going to bother. But you should. Now, when you're doing that second heat, be a little bit careful that you don't inadvertently heat it a little bit too much and melt the red layer underneath. You don't want that red layer to kind of bleed. Okay, and that's worked. And now we'll go back to my little tool here and put this back into position. Now don't worry if the acetate warps a little bit. Every time you heat it, it will bend a little bit. If that bothers you when you're for stamping, you can always apply, as I'm going to, a little bit of extra tape. And when it comes to actually using the acetate, you can warm it gently and reform it. So um, if you have the need to reform your acetate, just know it is possible to do that. And I'm going to take my tool and powder the whole area again. It's kind of like applying layers of stage makeup or something. You, you have to keep um, powdering liberally. Now, I could use all sorts of colours for this next layer. I'm going to use tea rose, which is a really light orangey pink, because um, I don't use it very often, basically. And I'm going to take my stamp and try and position this one. Which is not that easy, actually. Um, working backwards is not that straightforward, I have to say. So, time for some more Versamark. And remember, this one is the big solid shape. The good thing is that this technique, because of its very nature, is relatively forgiving. So, I'm double stamping all the layers. You don't really need to double stamp all the layers because, as I say, as long as the detail layers, so that's the bottom two, are correct, this should be fine. And if you need to, you can um, line it up a bit better than I have. I mean, I have not done the best job of lining this up uh, because this is not, I'm not making anything, I'm just showing you a technique. So... Again, I'm going to take on this powder. So I've done red, pink, and then this kind of orangey pink. And I think this tea rose is a really delightful colour. Um, there is a proper orange, orange blossom, uh, which is a mute, well, it's a muted orange. I think there might be another orange that I don't have as well um, in this range. Um, remove any excess, and the powder tool will help that excess to fall off because it stops things sticking. I tend to work top to bottom on the image when I heat it. I heat the top and then I work downwards. Now, I haven't quite got the contrast between the pink and the orange that I would have liked, so I perhaps should have done a brighter colour contrast, but now that it's completely dry and set, and now it's time to do the most important job, actually, which is to take a clean baby wipe, and on the side that's got the embossing powder, Give it a clean because it will have fingerprints and embossing powder and stuff all over it. And now the moment of truth. We turn it over. Look at that. 
perfectly embossed shape of an orchid and you can't really see the contrast between the green and the pink uh, sorry between the, 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 the orange blossom and the pink peony I would in the ideal world have done um, a yellow perhaps as the outside layer that would have shown up a bit more sharply but it means that on this side which is like the wrong side in terms of where the embossing went you get this lovely smooth finish rather than a raised embossing powder so you can use that on the front of a card and know that it'll look lovely and smooth and then you've got the bumpy side is the reverse so that just gives you another option another way to deal with these layering stamps and get the most out of them and that gives you a lovely smooth finish you can do stuff with and the nice thing with embossing on acetate is even if I fold it and crack the plastic it's not disastrous you can still see the plastic is still okay it's barely intact and if that ever happens you can actually mend it, mend, mend it again not quite perfect in this case because it's layered but you would just heat it and that would melt back the edges and then you just re-emboss that with a little bit of Versamark or a Versamarker pen and just reapply the red there so even if you bend them which is a lot of people worry about embossing on plastic in case they bend it you can repair it so it's robust it's a nice solid film and you could build that up you can actually emboss heat emboss each layer twice if you want to make it a bit more kind of dimensional but there you go a layered stamp set done using heat embossing in reverse it's a technique i call reverse stamp embossing and I hope you enjoy it. I hope you make use of it because I think it's a lovely technique. It's a nice way to make your stamp sets go a little bit further. And thank you all very much and good evening.